Uh, my name is Scott Holdison. Uh, I'm the Vice President of UAW Local 551. Uh, this is a dual purpose meeting. Uh, the first part of the meeting will be a speak out. Uh, several of the workers in here have gone through uh, uh, terminations or suspensions and uh, uh, working and fighting to get their jobs back. And we're going to hear some of those stories. Uh, also, afterwards, we're going to go into a planning session. Uh, UAW Local 551 is hosting a National Workers Conference in October. The dates are October 6th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, this is an a in-person planning meeting. We have several uh, conference calls uh, with people from the East Coast and the West Coast to try and uh, build this and, and do outreach to get other locals to uh, participate and, and come here. Uh, so again, uh, you know, let's get started with the, the speak out portion. My name is Eric Slater. I am a Chicago Transit Authority bus operator, bus driver for 11 years now. Uh, I have the last uh, two years or so I was elected to be a worker shop steward. We have about <clears throat> 600 bus drivers in my bus garage on the north side about a hundred maintenance workers and clerical workers and others, but I represent the bus operators. And uh, I was elected about two years ago and I was just reelected about two months ago, uh, overwhelmingly in the first ballot. I mention that because all kinds of forces were trying to stop that, uh, and including the termination itself when I was fired. Uh, and uh, the fact that I was reelected after being fired, brought back to work, and overwhelmingly uh, showed Bring, looks at, at uh, the attacks by management, how we're able to push back, and how they were able to get some victories. And we, we need to talk about victories, not just the, the bad things going on. I remember saying to my family when they fired me, uh, I, I we had prepared a little bit financially, but not enough for the long time it was, but this was such an opportunity, actually, um, because we were preparing for it. Uh, and every day they had me fired, I said I was going to make it worse on them for ha having me fired than if they were br bringing me back to work. And I knew if I could actually make that calculation in their mind that they would bring me back to work. So I continued to do my work in the garage. Uh, I had to fight both uh, internally with my union and also physically. They had police in the garage uh, stationed there to have me removed from the workplace. Eventually, we were able to fight, because I was the union official for the work. Workers didn't have a, a union steward, or they had one when, when they're supposed to have two for 600 workers, and that was not enough. So it was a continual battle. But in addition to doing the regular union work, which I was able to do, you know, across the street if I had to, I had over the cell phone, you know, on the internet, was able to do the union work, we were doing this political work, international work, having mass demonstrations of using this case as a way of fighting politically for the union and for the, at the workplace. And at a certain point, it was better for them to put me back in the bus. At least they could put cameras on me and I wasn't doing it. I couldn't talk on the cell phone when I'm driving the bus, right? Um, so eventually we won about 10 months later uh, through arbitration. Uh, but in my opinion, it wasn't the arbitration process that did it. It was the amount of, of pressure that we put upon the city administration and the Chicago Transit Authority uh, that we were able to win. Back in uh, December, uh, I was suspended until further notice, which is pretty much termination without being able to get uh, unemployment. Um, for nothing really, for, from what I'm saying, but they said filing a, a, uh, filing a false claim with, with the security in, in the plant. Uh, what happened was I got a, a call, said somebody broke in my locker, cut a lock off. Uh, I called security. Uh, security came, reported everything. Security asked, uh, "Did I know know uh, what happened? Uh, who, who went who went into the locker?" I told him I didn't know. I wasn't there. But uh, the day before, management was talking about cutting my lock off to go in and go through my my, my files. Uh, they said it was a false, false statement. I had Texas saying that it did, it, uh, it, it was uh, stated by management from hourly people. Uh, funny part about, about everything was when uh, they told me that they, they were suspending me, 
The manager told me, said, well, look, I know you probably get back. It, it don't bother me. He said, but you got around to causing us problems. Now we're causing you problems. Right? So uh, UAW, uh, the local, the region, they backed me 100%, 100%. Got me back in two weeks. Paid. Paid back, 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 back pay, everything. Uh, that's pretty, that's pretty much it. Uh, we filed charges, we filed OSHA charges. Uh, this, this still going on right now, Anita. Uh, we just actually just, just, uh, had them, uh, uh, we filed seven, seven, we got seven, uh, citations. Okay, you might have heard about it a couple weeks ago. Uh, seven citations, all serious, 12500 a apiece. So, you know, companies really, if you cost, you cost them money, they start listening to you. So we cost them money right now, still today. I was fired from my union activity at UPS. Um, I was a union steward uh, for uh, three terms. I must have filed about around 1,000 grievances, OSHA complaints, uh, NLRB charges against UPS. So they've been trying to fire me a long time. Multiple times I've been fired. You know, they would... Uh, you know, send me home, you know, and I told them you're going to be paying me for my time because, you know, you're paying me my guaranteed hours. Uh, one of the first, uh, the first time I went, went to the panel, you know, fired, you know, multiple times, the first time I went to the panel was during uh, the uh, Fight for 15 campaign in Chicago when they were having all the Fight for 15 hearings. So while I was, uh, you know, off of work fired, I got to speak at all the Fight for 15 hearings in favor of the $15 minimum wage. So I used, used that time well. So the uh, second time I went to panel, I got fired for another occasion. I ran a vote no campaign on a UPS contract. Um, 710 was negotiating their contract first. So I traveled uh, across northern Illinois and in northern Indiana, going to most of the UPS facilities on my, on my own time. I, I get like seven weeks of vacation a year. So six of those weeks of vacation a year, I was going to the UPS facilities morning, noon, and night you know, uh, running a vote no campaign, meeting, you know, flyering the buildings, meeting with people from, uh, you know, the different uh, facilities who are willing, you know, and, and giving them the tools to run vote no campaigns in their building as well. And uh, in 710, they voted down the contract. So then UPS had to go back to the table and negotiate. And then, and what they did is negotiated an extra five hours in a part-time vacation because um, you get one 25 hour week all the rest of the weeks are 20 hours. Now they're going to have all 25-hour weeks of part-time vacation starting 2018. And then 705 got a Me Too agreement. So whatever 710 gets, 705 gets because 710 did the same thing. Teams to Local 710 uh, did the same thing last contract. So, and this all is going to cost UPS $5 million. You know, that's how much they figured out this extra five hours of part-time vacation for two locals. So UPS fired me for my union activity, um, you know, um, and um, they uh, I filed chart. I lost, you know, at uh, the panel, you know, because the way the arbitration system kind of works is, you know, the arbitrator wants to keep on working. So it's, you know, the, the company, you know, the company, uh, if you go too much for the company, the union won't want them, and if you go too much for the union, the the company won't want them. So, ver so I already had this uh, arbitrator once, and he ruled for me one time. So now he ruled against me because, you know, basically the way the system is, he wants to be uh, be an arbitrator. But I'm planning on writing a book about the vote no movement at UPS, and you know, and how uh, UPS retaliated. But everything said and done, you know, I cost UPS five million dollars. Got you know. Um, you know, people had to be ready for it, and, and you know, it had, it had to be the zeitgeist, but, you know, people got five more hours in our part-time vacation, and I still got a pension from UPS, so tough noogies on them. All right. And I was um, terminated about a year and a half ago um, due to the fact that I tried to help a fellow, a fellow union member out by loaning some money. Big mistake. <laughs> I found out. But anyway, to make the story short, I asked them, the person to pay me, you know, to repay me, and pretty much they clowned on me. They say I was harassing them to get my money back. 
and labor terminated me right away. You know, my I felt my union rep was almost non-existent. You know, I felt I got railroaded. I couldn't. They told me I couldn't come back in the plant. You know, they pretty much took my car. They, had, they said they had video. I'm, to this day, I have never seen the video. Never seen it. I had a lawyer um, draft a letter asking them, could I get a, a copy of the video? They said no. I went through the grievance problem. The first stage, it sat on the chairman's desk for pretty much six months. Well, the, the first time I, I, I found out, I came back. Second time it was closed. Then it went to, you know, it still it went. They made a mistake some kind of way, and it went up to it went up to international. International say hold it up, hold it. Up. It's, you know, the procedure's wrong here, so they sent it back down. It for about three months. It sat on the desk again. No action whatsoever, and it was mainly because I was a thorn in. Um, somebody side, you know, that they didn't want to push my issue. You have people on the floor, knock down, drag out, blood drawn battles. I mean, fights. Get their job back within a matter of weeks. You know, the video showed, as far as I know, because I didn't do nothing, I was there. No contact whatsoever. I'm still out. My case is at International right now. Hopefully they be fair, but they drag. I mean, I, luckily I saved my money. But that that didn't ran a year and a half. I mean, that's a lot of money. You know, I lost um, bonuses. I lost a lot, a lot of money. I lost probably two hundred thousand dollars total. And the girl that, well, the person that did this, she had history of doing this to other union members. They didn't take that in consideration. You know. That's why I feel that we need to stick together as a whole. Everybody in my area, I worked in paint. Everybody pretty much said, I don't want to get involved. It's not me. I don't care. You're on your own. That, that's pretty much what they said. And um, you know, a few individuals like Scott and Terry and a couple of people on the, on the executive board, Miles, they helped me out. They, they pushed it when nobody else would. Other words, I'll be... I wouldn't have nowhere. I wouldn't be, um, how you said, uh, in good standings. So I wouldn't have use of the union hall or use of union resources. I mean, it is a shame that 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 um, the way we do things here is is you got to you know it's like the good old boy network. And I thought that was long time ago with the union. The union used to be a big. The unions used to do that a lot. You know, they used to hire people from within the families and over nine yards. So if you didn't know nobody, you didn't get in. I thought that was a thing in the past, but no, it's not. You know, if, I didn't, if, I, if, I, if you don't kiss somebody's butt, you don't get back in. Yeah. I got a question for you, Darius. Explain to them what they allegedly you, you did. Yeah, well, um, they said I, I pretty much harassed me. I harassed an uh, individual. For my money back, and that, that was it. And then that's all they told. Me. You know, I didn't get a chance to see the you know evidence against me or nothing. To this day, I can't come nowhere near the plant. You know, I can't even get my records. I can't get nothing. You know, so I mean, it's a long story, but I, I don't want to go into. It, but I was terminated, and I felt I was terminated at the worst. I mean, the, the worst you can be. So I can almost sympathize with that person going off or, 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 you know, being pushed to the limit, you know, because, I mean, that's pretty much what they did to me, you know, so thank you. Back in uh, March, March the 1st, I was, uh, wasn't feeling well at work and I was ill and after a while I couldn't get my breath. So I uh, pulled the cord, got a supervisor over there. I told the supervisor that uh, I wasn't feeling ill. I couldn't get no air in my lungs. First thing he told me was, well, I ain't got nobody else. 
So he walked away. I tried to work some more. After a while, I was deteriorating. So I pulled the cord again. Next, the supervisor's boss came. He asked me what was wrong. I explained to him what was wrong. The first thing he asked me, I told him I couldn't get no air in my lungs. I needed to go to medical. He asked me, and now it's around 11.30 p.m. Did I have anybody? He asked me, do, do you have an uh, 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 inhaler? And I explained to him that I did and it, that I had left it at home. He asked me, could I call home and have someone bring it to the job? I told him I want to go to medical. I want to go to a hospital. Well, about a half an hour later, they finally came me over, called me over to the hut, and they gave me something to go upstairs, a, a pass. I went upstairs. Now I'm really getting no air in my lungs. They say I was signing my own self out. I went straight to the hospital. Well, I ended up staying five days in the hospital because I had pneumonia. And all that I went through was a learning experience that I like to tell my brothers and sisters, if you feel like you, you, you are sick enough, step away from that line. Because that line going to keep going. If you fall dead, that line is still going to keep going. Thank you all. And the union is real. Unfortunately, only a small percentage of us realize that. Only a small percentage. I don't care where you go, how large that union is, you might get 2%. If it's a union of 200, you might have one or two people that are active. If you got 2,000, you might have 20 people that are active in unionism at those unions. Uh, it's, it's real what we do, and the attacks by the, uh, uh, well, I'm going to the Koch, the Koch Koch brothers and all of these huge money interests. They're, they're real, and they're a 1,000 miles ahead of us, a 1,000 miles ahead of us. We got a lot of work to catch up. And we got to do it one member at a time. It's hard. You know, management has already brainwashed them, already beaten them down. But one member at a time, we got to put that work in. We got to put that work in. And, and I, it can be costly to some locals. But I mean, if in my world, I have to take my board members. We don't have a... Uh, uh, lost time for the board member to perform union work. So I have to take them off CTA's clock, pay them. So they don't have paid release time. I don't know, I think you guys are able to, to do union, union work on the clock with, uh, with the company on behalf of your members, right? Yeah, a lot of it is, yes. Yeah, see, I don't have any of that. And, and I'm planning on uh, our, our election is in November, and when my new officers get elected, we're going to go through a month, a 30-day uh, boot camp, if you will. Your elected officials got to be hammered home with the real truth, and from there, the membership's got to go through a culture shock of training, of, of unionism, the works. But we got to keep fighting, and uh, I'm just glad that I got the opportunity to come here, and I'll do my part in informing you guys if we're doing something so we can start spending more time together, because it's exactly what we need. Thank you guys for inviting us here. Thank you. Emergency uh, Public Sector Workers Conference that we attended uh, in Urbana, Illinois, uh, in March. Uh, that resolution was to have a fall conference in, in Chicago uh, to try and build a solidarity network across the country. Um, Eric went to a, uh, a conference in, in Berkeley, California, and they reaffirmed that resolution and uh, were working with folks from the West Coast, with folks from the East Coast, to build this conference and make it a success. 
Um, we hope to build a, a network in conjunction with uh, Jobs with Justice, in conjunction with Labor Notes, uh, to uh, continue the solidarity work that they do and expand upon it. Right. So that's what the next part of the uh, the conference or this this meeting is going to be about is is building that uh, uh, conference and some of the plans that we're doing for it. October sixth, uh, seventh, and eighth, we're having a conference, a national workers conference here. Uh, the reason that we have <coughs> conference calls to to make plans is because this is truly a national and even an international project. Um, there are uh, people on the call from uh, the West Coast, from the East Coast, from Detroit, from South Bend, and uh, we're, we're working to build this conference as a national uh, workers network where we can uh, come to the aid of, of uh, workers in distress uh, and find out about those fights because often we find that uh, our international unions uh, tend to isolate unions that are on strike or, or on lockout. They don't tell us about it right away. Um, and that leads to uh, a depression of the members and uh, the feeling that they're, they're isolated, that they're fighting alone against this huge corporation. We're going to start on Friday, October 6th, and uh, we're going to have a, a morning registration. And then we're going to break out into uh, interest group meetings. That's the plan so far. Uh, so the, we're looking to have uh, different uh, unions involved, uh, education workers, transportation workers, auto workers, uh, steel workers meeting, uh, healthcare workers, fight for 15, transportation workers.